Whenever we talk to grads about their time on campus, we notice that there was a lot of nostalgia surrounding the tuck shop cinnamon buns. So Neutral decided to dig up the recipe and learn how to make these buns at home. This recipe doesn't need too many ingredients. All it takes is butter, sugar, salt, eggs, cinnamon, yeast, and flour. The recipe starts with softening the yeast, but I'm going to start with the butter mixture. First, let's boil the water. The recipe calls for margarine, but I used butter instead. I prefer the flavor of butter, so this switch is just a personal preference. Also add sugar and salt, and then add your hot water. Stir it around a little so that the butter gets nicely incorporated. I like to start with this step first so that this mixture has some time to cool before adding the flour. Now we'll go back and work on the yeast. So you take two packets of yeast, and to activate it, you mix some granulated sugar and then add warm water. Stir that around so that all the little yeast particles are hydrated. Keep this at room temperature and we'll leave this for about 10 minutes so that the yeast can bloom. You're going to see that your yeast will start to produce some bubbles and that just means that your yeast is waking up and kind of alive and growing. While that blooms, let's go back to the melted butter mixture. Mix that with flour until it's smooth and creamy, then add the bloomed yeast, your eggs, and more flour. Once the dough is looking very smooth and soft, it can go in a big bowl. Put a little bit of oil in there so it doesn't stick, cover it, and let it rise for an hour. If you're not seeing much growth, move it to a warmer part of your kitchen and that will help it out a little bit. While that's rising, let's make the cinnamon and sugar mixture and melt more butter. Now that the dough has doubled in size, we're going to turn it out onto a clean floured surface. It will seem like it's too sticky, but we'll knead it for a minute or two just to even out all those bubbles and everything that was happening in the dough. The dough is pretty fun to work with, but it does start to get messy. If it's really sticking to your hands, all you need to do is sprinkle a little more flour onto the dough and it'll be much easier to work with. Let it rest for another five to 10 minutes. Now we're ready to start putting these cinnamon buns together. I found it easier to shape the dough before dipping it into this butter and cinnamon sugar mixture. I'm taking some liberties with the sugar and cinnamon ratios, but it's okay. The knot is the most iconic part of this cinnamon bun and also the trickiest. Keeping the piece of dough fairly even will help the shape of the knot and you don't need to be too gentle with the dough, but when you're tying the knot, don't pull too hard on the ends like it's a shoestring. It will feel tricky at first, but there's so much dough to work with that you'll get the hang of it. Taking even more liberties with the cinnamon and sugar. Once your knots are finished in a properly sized pan, let them rise for another 45 minutes and then they'll be ready for the oven. Letting them rise a second time is going to give you a much fluffier bun, so it is an important step that you don't want to skip. And now I'd like to introduce you to a little something I call mistake number one. Not using the proper type of pan. I thought I would see what difference using a cookie sheet would make, and as it turns out, a big, burnt, flat one. This leads me to mistake number two, not properly oiling or buttering the pan, which means denying yourself the buttery, caramelly bottom of a proper cinnamon bun. So even if you think there's already a lot of butter on these knots, don't skip buttering the pan. And there you go, the tuck shop cinnamon buns that I try to keep as close to the original as possible. I hope you enjoy them.